the one female we normally see feeding the single, in fact, I'm just going to reposition so my head's not in the way, feeding the single youngster, it is a different female who's feeding both the, the, younger, the younger cubs. And Scott and I were chatting, we don't actually see this female feeding that often. We normally see the, the, the female, the single cub feeding. They are so cute. That's nice. Nisikaya Zoe's Rebecca's is active. Uh, three month pimpan, one adult. peaceful scene here at the den. Looks like mom makes a good pillow. The little one at the back is next to me grooming. Right. You can see definitely, <laughs> that's definitely her. It was actually a very sweet picture. Yeah. Nuzzle forward towards the teats.
Mom, stop licking me, I'm trying to drink. Here we go. Very attentive mothers, hyenas. Looks like he's enjoying that, or she's enjoying that. <laughs> oh, we've got... I'm a little bit more curious. That's a good clean. That youngster looks to be thoroughly enjoying that as well. Good morning, Shanae. Welcome. Um, Shanae is referring to a, a movie made, I think it was in the 80s, called Sh Shaga Zulu, about uh, the Zulu king. Uh, and in that movie, the hyenas had a very close relationship with the, the, the witch doctor, the Sangoma. And she'd like to know, do they feature prominently in, in African folklore? And to answer your question, Shnei, they do very, very prominently. Um, they are associated with black or dark magic, um, evil uh, witches, because you have good witches and evil witches in African folklore. Um, evil witches use them um, as their, their servants and, and they're the pets. Um, witches are said to ride on the backs of hyenas. Um, in Zambia, they said uh, to the witches who keep hyenas mark their ears with specific patterns. But generally, um, owls and hyenas all feature on the bad side of, of African folklore and, and all dark magic. It's called lots of different things depending on where you are in Africa. Um, in this area, it's called Tagati. Um, further north in Botswana, it's called Maloi. But all of it is um, that sort of bad, dark magic. Um, I know of a case in Zambia where there was a bout of man-eating by hyenas. Um, and that was all blamed on a certain witch. And it was said that, that as soon as you would start trying to track the hyenas to find them and kill them, the tracks would go from hyena to human. Um, 
And shape shifting is quite common in, in a lot of cultures throughout the world. But lions and hy- man eating lions, hyenas, leopards are said, said to normally be shape shifters that can change into a human and hide in plain sight. A very funny occurrence. I'm not going to say exactly who or, or what or when. Oh, I'll say when. It was in the, probably the late 50s in southern Tanzania um, during the developments of one of the national parks. Uh, they were, the, the, the then British government was trying to convince certain villages to move out of an area that would be within the new national park or the new park and um, there the villagers were not not keen on moving at all um, and the state vet and the local sort of game warden I think they must have been having a few toots when they came up with this plan um, decided to dart they darted a, a hyena and they put a pair of khaki pants on it and then they released it near the villages. And those villages were packed up and gone within five days. There was serious bad magic if there was a hyena that was wearing clothes in that area. And they all moved out of where the national park <laughs> was supposed to be. Um, actually, it was quite a prominent figure in, in East Africa, in, in, in Tanzania at the time. Quite a well-known figure who did that. Wherever you have bouts of man-eating by, by predators, um, generally witchcraft will be worked into it. There's quite a famous man-eater from quite recently, I think the early 2000s, um, from the Salu Game Reserve in Tanzania, um, who was taking people outside of the reserve, um, I mean, out of their houses, um, while they were working on the fields, um, and he was considered to be a shapeshifter. Uh, and he got the nickname Osama after Osama bin Laden. But he was eventually shot by um, government officials. And it was a young male lion. Good morning, Tammy. Uh, welcome. Tammy would like to know, or oh, says it looked like the older cub was trying to get a, a sneak at the nipple there and, and get a suckle. Um, and would it be possible for a cub to convince um, a mother that it should be able to feed, if, even if it's not its uh, cub? I don't, not with hyenas, uh, Tammy. They, as you can see, as soon as she thought it was getting a bit too close, she chased, she chased it off.
You think two of these are hers? Yeah, those two are definitely hers. It's the slightly bigger one that's not. That's the female with the really tatty ears and that sort of uh, almost like lightning or like scar yeah. on her back that looks like maybe from lions. That's the, the mother of the, the, older, the older cub. This is actually the first time I've seen this one at the den. Good morning, Charlene from Minnesota. Um, Charlene would like to know how... Charlie, sorry, Charlie. Would like to know how old um, hyena cubs are when they stop uh, um, suckling and move on to solid food. Hyenas are quite unusual in the fact that they they will nurse for a much much longer time uh, than most than most uh, predators. Up to about seven or eight months, they are still almost completely dependent on mother's milk and eat very very little meat. But they do um, eat a little bit beforehand, more sort of just chewing on bones and stuff like that. But they have, have been known to suckle up to over a year. But by that stage, they are more, um, more sort of uh, reliant on, on, on actual meat. Normally completely weaned by about 12 to 14 months. Ah, king of the castle. Well guys, uh, thanks for joining us this morning. I do apologize for the technical difficulties we've been having, but um, probably uh, uh, it's the solar flares because we can't really figure out what else it could be. <laughs> Alex even went back up to the repeater to check again. But it seems to got better as the, as the mornings progressed. So thanks very much for joining us. I'm um, from Brian, myself, uh, and Andrew and FC, and Alex and Mark who had to get, get, get out of bed on their morning off to go <laughs> have a look at the repeater. Um, we really appreciate it and thanks very much and hopefully we'll see you all this afternoon so have a good evening or morning or day wherever you might be in the world cheers